Hey hey, Tom here from Audio Ordeal, welcome back and today we are going to be looking at the next part of this synth series on building synths in Reactor. So we're going to be looking at macros, pitch and filters. So let's start off very quickly covering macros because they are fairly simple. New macro and this basically is a container which can hold various things. So instead of having all these different modules we can have a macro for oscillator, we can have a macro for filter, and so on. And this basically means that we can group everything together, and the main routing can just be these large groups, and within that we can have much deeper processes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep these two, and I'm also going to create a macro for envelope. Now then, to start with, we are going to open this macro by double clicking, built in module, terminal, import, built in module, terminal, out port. Now then, this only needs the gate in and obviously out, because the only thing going into this envelope is the gate signal, and the only thing coming out is the output. This and these are all going to be housed within it, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do cut selection paste them in and then just get it neat and tidy input there and output here that's all we need to do and that changes it from this whole collection of modules to just one now then oscillator I'm actually going to rename that to oscillators so we have everything else so far cut and paste in. Now then the difference with this is we have two inputs pitch and amplitude and we've got one output so terminal in terminal in and then built in module terminal out. So these inputs are for the pitch and amplitude it's always worth renaming them for the right reasons, that way we can follow as we're quickly going through. Oh, amplitude in there, amplitude there, and I made a mistake, pitch also goes there. This way, once we click out, pitch and amplitude, now we can pitch, and then the amplitude will come from here. So again, we're going to rename this to A, and the envelope sends the amplitude out after receiving the gate, so G. And this is the easiest way for everything to be troubleshooted, is if we just make sure everything lines up. So P to P, G to G, A to A. And that is how you get a really good sounding synth, because everything works. Now then, we're going to go into the filters in a small while, but we're going to cover some pitch altering. So most synths have a octave control, they also have a like semitone control and a fine tuning control. We are going to add this. So let's stretch this out a bit. So the pitch signal goes in to the pitch and let's say it's C, middle C, it will be a pitch signal of 60. So that will go in the number 60 goes into here and it plays the relevant note. I'll just connect this so it all works afterwards. What we can do, we can add some maths modules. So if you hit middle C, we can add 1. So it actually plays a C sharp. Or if we add 2, it will play a D. And it's just adding incremental mid MIDI notes on. We can do add 12 and that will add an octave. Or we could do add 0 0.01, that will add a small, small increment of pitch over it. So that's what we're going to do. So just before I do that I'm going to make sure everything's wired up. So pitch in, gate into envelope and then we're going to put the outputs to there. Give it a little test. Okay everything's working fine. So in here we're going to create a new macro. Always a new macro, always keep it tidy. Built in module Terminal in, 
built-in module, terminal, out. Now what I do, save macro as, and just one in, one out. I have my own made, yeah, I've made a whole bunch of different things. So two in, two out macro, four in, four out, and then various different macros. We're gonna call this pitch control. So this has quite a lot of modules in it, so we're gonna just contain it all within the macro. And that makes it a lot easier to use. So we have basically the line, pitch goes in, gets processed here, and then goes out. So the simplest thing we can do, maths, add. So signal goes in, we can add something, let's create a control. This control can go from maximum 12 to minimum minus 12. And step size is 1. So this will add 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 12. Or add minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, all the way down to minus 12. And so this will be our main control for pitch. So let's set the default of it to zero, set to default, it goes to zero, and if we play about, it'll play the same note. Now if we move this up and down, I am still hitting the same note, I'm always hitting the A key on the piano. So that's the easiest way to add a semitone, so let's call this semitone. Now then, we can add octaves, which are increments of 12. So what we can do is add a second one. And let's add, let's add a control. Create control. This will have to be in increments of 12. So we'll make it go three octaves up and three octaves down and obviously it'll be in step sizes of 12. This is where it will get a bit different because it's still saying in semitones, I've spelled octave wrong. So if we were to play about with this knob, it's gonna go from 36, 24, 12, zero, minus 12, and we don't want the user to think it's 12 octaves or 24 octaves. So there's a really easy way of doing this. We use this knob, maximum three, minimum minus three, step size one. So this time it's going to go one, two, three. Obviously this is gonna add semitones if I play about. So this is where we use the maths and we do multiply, so multiply here we just multiply that value out by 12 and then this should play octaves now there we go so sometimes it's worth using the controls in this case just do it as one increments so one two three and then multiply it out by the value that you want we will just keep it neat and tidy so far so you have semitone we have octave let's add a fine tuning um, so built-in module math add replace that wire with this create control now then, we only want this control to go maximum up, up or down one semitone, so let's call this, not semitone, sorry, up or down one semitone, so let's call this fine tuning. So it's really within the semitone that we want it to work. So this is already set by default, maximum one, minimum minus one, and it goes in small steps of 0 0.02. Let's just make this a bit finer, 0 0.01. And this will send every every value in between minus one and one in hundredths. 
So if we play about here. So it just sounds like you're playing with the tuning peg. And this is really good if you want to detune the sound. So there we go. That's in the pitch control. That will change the pulse as well. So that's us with the pitch control. Now then, we can double click to get out of this macro, but let's just give it a tidy up first. It's good to keep the wires all visible so you can see where everything's rooted. And when you can have things tight like that, it just looks neat and tidy. And we can go out. So we now have our envelope, which is here. Our oscillators, which within that contains the pitch control and the waveform. Let's add a filter. So in the filter, built-in module, terminal, in, built-in module, terminal, out. Built-in module, filter. And let's just do a Pro 52 filter, which is essentially a low-pass filter. This is taken from one of Native, Native Instruments' old synths. I cannot remember which one. So the input, send to the input, the output obviously to the output. We'll just keep that tight there. Now then we can create a pitch control and a resonance control. We could also do linear controls but it's normally normally good to just start off with what you have. So let's play about with this. Let's lock that. Let's see how this works. And of course we need to root it. What we could do, we could try the other control, see how that works. So that's very linear and what we really want is the logarithmic control. So always worth testing it out. Um, depending how much you understand about exponentials and logarithms, you may be able to quickly figure it out. Otherwise it's just trial and error and you'll suddenly have a better understanding. It's just whether it responds linearly or logarithmically. So I'm hitting the button, bringing this up. Let's play about, just make sure everything works. If we try all these different settings, everything should work different. Okay, so everything so far is working great. Let's just set everything back to default. So there we have it. What we can do is we can have a selection of different filters. Let's instead of Pro 52, ladder filter. Same cutoff, same resonance. This saves, if we have the filter switch, if we can keep as many of the controls the same, it makes it a lot easier. And then of course we just in. So we want to add a switch. The good thing about the ladder filter is it has various poles. So we can do Pro 52, Pro 52, LP1, LP2, LP3, and LP4. Just name them. And we can just, if we, oh, unlock it. Filter choice, shall we say. 
and what we'll do finally it will set the default to 1 so it defaults to the ladder filter now we have various filter settings and that just gives us for very little extra work that gives us a whole bunch of choice and a whole variation in the sound. I don't like this menu for something so big so what we can do, we can do view, we can do small and then we can do style, we could do menu, drop down menu, we could do text panel or we could do spin. Spin is probably the best one because it just allows us to cycle up or down in the in the different names. And then we can just drop the width. So for fairly deep deep control here, we have a really small amount of space taken up, and this is really handy for when you're building your synth because you want a lot of space for as much control as possible. So there we go. That is the macros, that is the pitch control, and then the filters all covered so far. So we we are beginning to get quite a good sounding synth. And as you can hear, you know, the Ranger sound capable by it already is potentially enough to use as maybe bass lines or sub lines in a song. So tune in and look out for the next video. Please give it a like and a subscribe if it has helped you. We will go deeper and deeper each video. So do look out for them. And thank you so much for watching.